All right, guys, welcome back today. We are doing something different. We are doing how much tier list to be honest i'm not 100 percent sure if i should do this because i still haven't used some of the mods extensively but i do feel it's needed because uh, some new players ask me what mods do i prefer and i think what's the better way than making a tier list all right let's get started and of course this video is intended for new players so it can help them choose the right mods and for the more experienced players you can say run you don't know what you're talking about. This is better mod. Okay, the first mod we have is the Advanced Red Gyros. This mod basically increases the turn speed of your weapons by 75%. I would put this mod into the B tier, uh, especially because uh, not very useful is if you have fast turning turrets, but in terms of slow moving turrets like uh, Ghost Cannons, this mod is a lifesaver so add uh, somewhere in the middle and now for the advanced optics hmm. this mod increases the range of your energy weapons but however only beam weapons i think it belongs to the b tier because it's only beam weapons and beam weapons do only soft flux they don't do hard flux and to be honest i don't use this mod that often Advanced to red gyros. This mod I use quite often, it definitely belongs to the A tier, especially because it increases the durability of your weapons and also increases the hull armor of your ship. Uh, yeah, it uh, it makes the turret slower, but not by a significant margin. And also for the bonus, it, it only costs 15 ordinance points. Next we have augmented right field. This is an S tier. It increases burn speed of sad ship by 2. This is a must have mod, especially because most of the cargo ships are really slow and this saves you from the headache of being super slow. This is a no brainer. Automated repairs. This mod basically decreases the time uh, that your weapons and engine take to repair. Uh, this is, an, in my opinion, C tier. It's a good mod. Uh, for some ships, it's better than the rest. I personally never use this mod, especially because you have limited ordinance points. The same thing goes with the thrusters. It's a C tier, especially because it has a good bonus, but it costs 25 ordinance points. And yeah, the other mods are better. This mod increases the crew, and I think it's a D tier. I would never use it, personally. And the only ship you would probably use it on are civilian ships, and and it also increases their maintenance so so i don't see myself using this mod at all okay where do we put the blasters um increased hull integrity and also less casualties i'm thinking c or d let's put it into the d tier for now all right this one will be quite controversial i will get probably bunch of crap for this mod uh, it's the converted hangers this mod basically allows you to put uh, fighters on your non-carrier ships it does quite ordinance points heavy it costs 20 ordinance points it can go to the c tier because of the uniqueness and uh, you can do a lot of interesting stuff it makes your fighters weaker and it makes them insanely more expensive this mod in my opinion costs way too much for what it does and one more thing to be noticed, I'm using the ordinance points from the capital ships. Next we have ECCM package and ECM package. I haven't used this mod, so I'm leaning towards you, uh, saying I don't know, uh, but I personally think they're quite bad, so... Because there's just so many other different mods that I would prefer to put on my ships than these two mods. I put the ECCM package a bit higher because it's maybe more usable when you have heavily rocket-oriented ships, so might be usable there. Extended magazines. It's an A tier. Every time I have magazine style weapons, I put this thing on. It doesn't cost much and it doubles the magazine size. Very good mod. The only reason it's not a nest here because not a lot of weapons have magazines. Missile racks. Yeah, we don't have to talk about it. Nearly every ship has rockets and this just doubles the count. It's a must have mod. Whew, now extended shields. Um, extended shields can work only in very specific scenarios and must say I nearly never use it. So the C tier is, I think, good. Now we have the two flux mods. Uh, one increases the flux uh, capacity, the other one increases the flux dissipation. They're both quite low, especially because increasing the flux dissipation or capacity manually gives you 
more of the said things. And to be honest, flux dissipation is for me much more important than the capacity. And I think it's uh, D tier because I never max out the flux capacity at all. So this mod goes to the D tier, especially because you have stabilized shields uh, and the stabilized shields are better in my opinion. Uh, makeshift generator uh, C tier, especially because not many ships don't have shields. And this thing gives your ship a shield, so yeah. Uh, this thing increases the capacity of your fuel tanks, however, it also increases the maintenance, so uh, I don't think it's worth it at all. So it's a D tier. Now, hardened shields, they're quite expensive, however, they reduce the damage that the enemy deals to your shield and it also deflects the ion damage better. So yeah, it's a B tier. It only reaches B tier because it heavily depends on the ship you're using and only few ships really depend on their shields. Now comes very interesting mod that I didn't even know that existed. Uh, and it's thanks to you guys because yeah, these are militarized subsystems and they increase the burn speed by one. It's a clear S tier, especially because, as I said, the burn speed is very important and some of the bigger cargo ships have seven burn speed and usually you will keep it around eight. It's about the augmented dry field because augmented dry field is much more expensive and usually the militarized systems are good enough. Heavy armor comes to the B tier next to the hardened shield. It's basically the same. It increases the armor. It's however very expensive. The main drawback of this mod, it's ridiculously expensive. Next we have sensors. Uh, I don't know. But it's definitely C or D tier. I don't think it's that good. So either it goes to the D tier or I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. It increases the sensor strength. However, I never used it. So sadly, I don't know. This mod seems uh, pretty decent. It increases the integrity of your ship. It reduces the damage the, the engine takes. And also it decreases the sensor profile of the ship. And I think it's round C tier. It might be a very good mod. Improvement to the PD systems, uh, I think we'll put it somewhere in the C tier, I would put it here. And now we have integrated targeting systems. This is a god tier and I think, I don't think it should be nerfed, but something should be done about this thing. Because it is must have on every ship in the game. If you don't put this mod, you cannot play with the ship. It gives you insane amount of range for decent amount of ordinary points and even carriers sometimes cannot go wrong with this thing so yeah i think it's absolutely mandatory and i probably should have put one more tier above to a god tier because this mod is it's absolutely broken in my opinion uh, next hardened subsystem it's a b tier in my opinion you don't use it you don't use this mod that much but however some ships who have low deployment time uh, this is very good and for, it's very good for example on ships like doom i think at least what the hell is this hmm. so apparently if you put this mod on a ship it increases the other ship's speed uh, by around two to five percent depending on the hull size i don't think it is worth it so maybe i don't know or around somewhere in the d tier i think it's d tier but we can put it to i don't know not sure uh, operation center it increases basically the recover speed uh this mod is decent when you put it on your main flagship however i still don't put it on so i think it's around d tier all right recovery shuttles um if you're tight on money and care about your fleet or want to role play it might be an Astir, but yeah, down to D tier it goes. Uh, the casualties from the fighters, at least in my opinion, aren't an issue. All right, so now this mod increases the chance of your ship surviving if it gets killed. If you have some very, very important ships in your fleet, this thing is decent. The use in the late game falls off quite sharply, especially be because you have much more money and the losing one ship isn't big of an issue. I think it goes around C tier, yeah. Increased venting speed. I think it's a no-brainer around, I feel to put it in the A tier, but it's very close. Safety overdrives. Uh, yeah, we know this mod is basically just for fun. 
Uh, however, some people can make it work, so I will put it into don't know. I cannot put it into C or D tier, especially because how fun the mod is. Ah, dedicated targeting core. Uh, yeah, very good. An A tier. I use it much less than the S tier mod. However, for certain ships, it's very good. You cannot use this on all ships, so it will be less used. That's why it's an A tier. But it also increases the range very, very strong. Oh, we have inst unstable injectors two times. Damn it. Unstable injectors increase the speed of a ship, but also decrease the weapon range. The use is very specific, so it goes into B tier. Uh, you don't use it often. Uh, accelerated shields, uh, decent B tier. All right, Omni Shield. This thing basically allows you to move your shield around. However, it comes at the cost of the arc and it costs quite a lot of ordnance points as well. Uh, yeah, this one is a C tier. Uh, you won't use it that much. Right, stabilized shields. Uh, I didn't use this mod much, but I recently found out how strong this thing is, especially on ship which have high cost of upkeeping the shields. For example, Paragon. So on ships like Paragon, it's close to A or S tier. However, it doesn't happen that often, so it belongs around in the B tier. Surveying equipment, uh, it basically just decreases the cost of surveys. Uh, I don't know the value, so I would put it in the dunno, but for me, it's a D tier. I would never use it. But now we have solar shielding, and I think solar shielding comes to an A tier, especially in late game, because in the early game you care quite a lot about the storms, but in the late game, yeah, I personally just went go right through the storms. And uh, this thing basically allows you to go right through the storm and not suffer that heavy damage. And it also has one insane thing, that it reduces the energy damage taken by 20%. So pretty crazy if you're fighting the remnants. I think we are missing some mods. Uh, yeah, so let's look at it. All right, these two. At least I think that's all of them. First of all, collapsed cargo holes. It basically just... Uh, Increase your armor based around how much cargo you can hold, but it costs quite a lot. So for me, it's uh, yeah, it's a D tier. And now expanded crew decks. I will put it uh, to S tier, although it might be an A tier. It basically you have to put it on every carrier in this game. All right, guys, this is it. Tell me what you think about this mod. I cannot wait to hear your opinion. Also, let me know if you want some other tier list. I have in mind weapon tier list as well and much more. I hope you enjoyed guys and I will see you next time. Ciao ciao.